This is lesson 2-2 on deductive reasoning. Now, in the previous lesson, we studied a process called inductive reasoning, where we observed data and found patterns and made conclusions from that data. So, recollect that Mr. Lean was studying the outcome of his bad meat experience, where every time he ate meat, he got sick. Now, using repeating patterns for reasoning, Mr. Lian came to the conclusion that if you eat bad meat, you will get sick. Again, this was a process of inductive reasoning where a set of data was organized, and from that data, a pattern was observed, and then a conclusion was reached based on that pattern. That is the process of inductive reasoning. But inductive reasoning isn't surefire. There's no guarantee that that pattern will ever continue. And in fact, many patterns that start oftentimes don't continue. Eventually, the data just changes its pattern or changes to something else. So therefore, we can't always rely on inductive reasoning, particularly in geometry and math. Instead, we need to rely on deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is a process of using proven facts and agreed upon assumptions to logically conclude new statements. So here's an example of deductive reasoning using that bad meat experience. You can look up and verify these facts that, first of all, old meat will spoil. That's an agreed upon assumption. We've all seen it so many times and we know that it's true. In addition, as old meat spoils, bacteria such as Listeria and Salmonella grow on the meat. That's a fact that you can look up in an encyclopedia or online as you're researching those particular diseases. From those two facts, we can gather a third doing deeper research and find out that Listeria bacteria causes gastrointestinal sickness with symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. So based on these facts, we can conclude that if you eat bad meat, you will get sick. So unlike just having to go through the excruciating experience of eating tainted meat and getting sick every time, we can do our research and look up facts that we can use to draw a particular conclusion. Now, this certainly applies to geometry as well. For example, fill in the blank. If an obtuse angle is bisected, then each newly formed angle is a blank angle. What goes in the blank? Well, let's do some fact finding. We know that we begin this statement with obtuse angles and that they're bisected. Well, we know for a fact that obtuse angles must measure more than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. In addition, facts that we know about bisectors, angle bisectors cut an angle exactly in half. Now, using these two facts together, we can draw a conclusion. If we take the minimum and maximum values of what an obtuse angle could be and divide those minimum and maximum values by two, we can reach the conclusion that the angle that we get after bisecting it must measure between 45 and 90 degrees. Now, pulling out another fact, once we see where this is going, we know that acute angles always are greater than 0 degrees and less than 90 degrees, which is actually the exact type of angle we'll get after bisecting an obtuse angle. Therefore, we can make the conclusion that after bisecting an obtuse angle, each newly formed angle must be an acute angle. Now, deductive reasoning is not perfect. It's usually more reliable than inductive reasoning, but there are times where it too can go bad. Because you need to remember an important detail about deductive reasoning. It is based on proven facts and agreed upon assumptions. But sometimes, especially if you don't use proven facts, and 
we might rely more heavily on just agreed upon assumptions, you might get something like this. Now just pause this video a moment and follow the link that I have in the YouTube video notes below the video. Click on that link and you'll get a chance to watch a scene from the movie Monty Python's Quest for the Holy Grail. And it's a perfect example of where deductive reasoning can go wrong. Watch that video and then come back to this one. Now after watching that video, you can clearly see that their reasoning almost is borderline absurd. And of course they do it for humorous reasons. But it really highlights the point that deductive reasoning does have its faults. There can be plenty of flaws in logic. For example, this statement. One of the members of the audience said that if something weighs as much as a duck, therefore it floats. But that's clearly not true. And we can easily make prove that statement false by merely finding a simple counterexample. Such as just finding something that doesn't float in water, but still weighs as much as a duck. A rock, for example. And as soon as you use false statements in the process of deducting reasoning, then every conclusion that's reached, therefore, cannot be true. But you have to be very careful about watching for what facts and agreed upon assumptions get used in a deductive reasoning argument. This concludes today's lesson.